Welcome to the Cloudy Desk. I'm Claudia, and if you are someone who has joined um, joined us here today from the eight pen questions train um, from the previous video with Simone, welcome in. And if you are someone who's been here before, welcome back. Um, like the title says, today I'm going to be doing my eight pen questions because the first time this tag went around, I wasn't on YouTube at all as a viewer or as a creator. Um, so I'm really excited to share my pen story with you all for the first time. Um, so question number one is when and how did your journey begin? And for those of you who want, I have the questions down below in the description box. So I first started using pens in, I think, third or fourth grade. We were I went to a German style school and we were required to use them for all of our school work. We had to write in blue or black fountain pen for everything. Um, and then I sort of fell off of it after I left that school. But then when I went back to grad school, I, for the first time, when I went back to grad school for the first time, because we do have two masters, I slowly started to get back into pens um, just as a thing to use to write. And then shortly after that, I started to use fountain pens for my art. While I primarily used dip pens and bottles of ink when I was at home, that wasn't something I could conceive, I couldn't realistically do when I was out and about. And I think I have shared this before, but this is just one example of sort of what I used my fountain pens for. And this was mostly done with a Pilot Metropolitan and it was something I could carry around with me and make these little comics whenever I felt felt like it. Um, it didn't matter if I was at home or out. I could sort of carry. This is like a B7 notebook and a pen, and I was good to go. Um, and then again, in about 2020, when the lockdown first began, I got very into writing letters to my friends, and that's when I really started to use fountain pens more regularly for writing, and now today it is sort of what I use as my everyday writer. Um, that's just what I use to write now as much as I can. Question two is what were my favorite inks in the beginning? And in the very beginning, I had to use blue or black ink when I was in school. So when I first started using pens outside of school, I got very into using like purple and then turquoise because they just felt I guess rebellious <laughs> for me and I, I always for some reason use short cartridges even though I wasn't using pens that needed short cartridges. I think because that's what I used in school were the short ones for some reason. Um, yeah so I, I liked purple and turquoise because they made me feel like I was doing something different and maybe not as serious as when I was using them for school. Um, then I used Pilot Carbon Black as my main black ink for a while, but now I much more gravitate to um, greens and browns, um, in particular this uh, Kobe ink. I think it's number 34, it's Sirocloin Tea Green, is one of my favorite inks, um, and I have a couple browns that I really like, and I just really sort of lean more towards those earthy colors and like a little more muted colors. Um, now, question number three is how have my ink and pen tastes changed? Um, I already sort of talked about how the colors have changed, but in addition to that, I have started to gravitate to not just picking pens, or not just picking inks for their color, but also their properties. When I first started, it was just not something I was really aware of. I thought actually shading, when I had an ink that really shaded, I thought it was a bad thing in the ink. I thought it was supposed to be more evenly distributed on the page and that was like something to be avoided. But as I've been educating myself more, I've been getting into different types of properties. In particular, I find myself really interested in chromo shading inks, so things that have sort of multiple colors in them. I find that really interesting and fun to explore. In terms of pens, I wouldn't say my taste has changed a ton in terms of the pen bodies themselves. But in terms of the nibs I use, it's really changed. I started being pretty exclusively medium nib 
person. Um, and I think I only really, apart from my pilot Metropolitans, which I started using for art, up until then I'd only really ever had Western nibs, so I was having Western mediums. And now I much more find myself drawn to and using uh, fines and extra fines, and in particular I really like Japanese nibs. Um, just as a note, I don't know if it's picking it up on the mic, but it is very windy here today, and that's just not something I can really avoid. So if you're hearing some wind, I'm so sorry, but I'm, I'm dealing with some elements here. <laughs> yeah, so I've moved from Western mediums to more Asian nibs, in particular Japanese nibs that are much finer. I've also gotten very into exploring different nib grinds, particularly ones that have reverse writing as a, a feature. I have done a video on this, so feel free to check that out. Question number four is, are there any inks or pens I would like to try? For inks, I'm really, I haven't done, explored a lot of, but would love to, the Sailor Ink Studio inks. Um, I mentioned I'm really interested in chroma shading. They seem to have a lot there, as well as I'd like to get more exposure to the Burning, Birmingham Pen Company inks. Um, yeah, it's just harder to find samples of those, and I don't want to commit to buying bottles, but they are something I'm really interested in. Um, in terms of pens I would like to try, I really want to try the Monarch nib, not necessarily even a pen. I already have um, a shown pen. I think I have one right here. Um, but I'd love to try a Monarch fine nib since the reverse is broader. I think that would just work really well with how I've been using pens lately. Um, and that is something that's definitely on my list to take a look at when I go to the DC pen show this summer. Question number five is, do I have a holy grail pen? Um, this one's tough for me because I don't, it's hard for me. Okay, for me, a holy grail pen is something that is like unobtainable for me, like so expensive that it's not something I could just save up for and buy. Um, and because of that, I almost don't let myself look at pens that are that expensive because it's just like, well, why covet something I could never even possibly have? But I guess um, my more general answer, it's not a specific pen, but I would love to have a pen with Raden or Makie or Rushi or one of those sort of very traditional Japanese craftsmanship style pens. Um, I don't think I'll ever really be able to afford or justify that, but would love. I guess if someone wanted to give me one, that would be amazing. <laughs> and question number six is, how many pens do I own? And this was actually very surprising for me because I hadn't counted in a while and my number was much higher than I anticipated. I have 14 pens with two more on the way. Um, right now, I use this Esterbrook six pen roll with, I either have my uh, rickshaw two pen koozie tucked in, or I have sewn a three pen one that I keep in here. And these are all of the pens that I currently have uninked. So this is like my storage system. Um, so I currently have six, seven that are uninked, which means I have seven that are inked. I have 14 currently in the in my direct possession but some of them have such specific uses that it feels a little odd to count them towards my total number like I have two pens one that I exclusively keep platinum carbon black ink in and one that I exclusively keep a different um, permanent ink so right now I have a brown permanent ink in there that I use for drawing and those and those aren't pens that I ever use to write with. They are my drawing pens. They live in my art supplies. They don't live in my, my writing pens. So those don't feel like they super count towards. And then I have a couple pens that like I may be not using as much. Like this is a Parker 21 that was my grandmother's um, that I'm really keeping 
for sentimental reasons because I wanted to have a pen of hers. It does work. I could use it. It just doesn't write the way I want. So unless I get something ground, unless I get the nib checked out, I don't really see myself using this regularly. Um, same with this Traveler's pen. I love this pen. But ever since I got the Schoen Pocket 6, I just used this pen for everything I would use this one for because it has a full-size nib on it, and that just makes it much more appealing to me. I mean, you can see here the differences in those two. Um, yeah, so I have, like, some contenders for pens that are, like, not in my active rotation, so maybe I'd consider retiring them and sort of seeing if they're the ones I'd actually want to use more. But for now, 14, two on the way, 16. Um, and this brings us to the next question is, is there a limit to how many pens I have? Is it a number? Is it a feeling? Is it something else? Um, for me, I think before I filmed this, I would have said my limit is 10 pens. But then I counted and I have more than 10 pens already. I have 16. So what does that mean? Um, and I think I'm actually, the fact that I'm at higher than that number does resonate with me because I am already feeling uh, weird when I have to ink up pens, that there are pens that I really love using that I don't ink up each month. Because I can't, I don't write enough that I can have tons of pens inked. I sort of have five in my, like, active rotation currently. So like I said, I have seven inked up, two are always inked, they're my drawing pens, and the remaining five I have two that are dedicated to specific journals, I have two for letter writing, and then I have this one that is my like everyday carry that I use for work. Um, so because of that, in my head I think of ten being a good number because then I could every other month rotate through my pens, but at 16, that's not going to be the case. And then a pen like this, this is one of my favorite pens. I'm not using it this month. Same with my Twisby that has the journal in it. I love writing letters with this, but I, it's not inked up this month. And what does that mean? Um, and next month, if I were to ink up, I know I want to keep this one in rotation, and then there's another one that stays inked, so that's three pens I'd be looking to ink up, I can't ink up all of these next month. And then so some of these would go even longer. So I don't know what it means. I don't know if that means I'm immediately going to get rid of pens, but I do think for how I use them, 10 feels like a reasonable number for me that I could be spending adequate time with each one. But we'll see. And then question number eight is, what would I do if another pen or ink comes along? Well, ink, that's easy. I, I would get a sample. Um, I'm not currently buying bottles of ink unless I've gotten a sample, finished the sample, and loved the sample. Then I will buy a bottle. Um, I don't have a number limit for bottles of ink. I have a drawer I store them in, and... As long as I have room in the drawer, that's sort of fine with me, and as long as it's an ink I'll keep using. Um, but in terms of pens, since I am, since I do have more pens than I think I would reasonably feel good about having, I really need to think about what does that pen add to my collection in terms of, like, the nib. Is it a nib I really want to try? Like, let's say I were to get a Monarch with a body at the pen show. Well, what does the body offer that I don't have? I have two pens that take, or actually I have more, but I have two pens currently uninked that take Yolo number six nibs and could take the Monarch, so why would I get a body to go with it? What would that body add? Um, or is there a specific use that's not being represented? For example, I backed the Enso bolt retractable pen on Kickstarter. That's one of the two pens that's sort of on its way to me. And that I could justify because I don't have a retractable pen. And I, the way I hold my pens, the vanishing point doesn't appeal to me because 
I my fingers touch. I don't hold my pen like this, so the clip, rather than having my fingers around the clip, I sort of have them on it, and it just always feels a little uncomfortable. So when I saw the bolt and that it didn't have that clip, that was really intriguing. I really liked the idea of having a retractable pen that was maybe part of my everyday carry, so that, that added something to my use. So that's how I could justify that one. Um, additionally, I have a sailor on the way with a medium nib because I currently have a sailor, medium, fine, and fine, and my sailors are some of my pens I love the most, and I really wanted to have that other nib. So that's how I justified that. But like, I don't know. I'd really have to think about it, and I'd maybe have to seriously think about retiring, retiring, putting in a drawer some other pens and not considering them as part of my total. But yeah, don't mean that to sound like a bummer. I don't think it's a bummer. I think it's really exciting the fact that I have a collection of pens I'm really like happy and content with and I don't, I can spend time with. Um, so I do want to be careful about what else I bring in. This was my answers to the eight pen questions. I'd love to hear yours. You can still hop on the train. I'm going to include a link below to the form if you want to formally. So we're posting, the group is posting one of these a day. And if you'd like to sort of be added to that list, feel free to fill out the form. You're also welcome to just post your own video and use the hashtag at any time. But tomorrow's video, I believe, is going to be Kristen from Life Inspires Design. So I'm going to include a link to her down below too. And if you're not familiar with her, you have to check her out. She does some of the most joyful videos ever. And I, I whenever she posts, they always go to the top of my watch list. Um, so please join us over there. And if you want to see all the other entries that have happened so far, I'm also going to include a link to the full playlist that has all the videos from this year so that you can check them out. There's been some really incredible ones, and it's been really wonderful to get to know folks through their answers to these questions. So thank you so much for sitting with me. I'd love for you to come back again, so please feel free to hit subscribe or like or whatever the things that everyone always says to do. <laughs> I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!